What's up, tennis fans? I'm Lauren Lynch, and this is Tennis Now, your source for the latest tennis news now. Kim Kleister survived a car crash to claim a tennis triple crown in Doha. Kleister's collected her third career WTA championships crown with a 6-3, 5-7, 6-3 conquest of world number one Caroline Wozniacki. Playing her first tournament since she successfully defended her U.S. Open title, Kleister's captured her 40th title and surpassed Serena Williams for the year-end number three spot in the rankings. Serena has won 37 career titles. Tennis' top working mom won her fifth championship in just 11 tournament starts this year, and she did it after the car she was riding on Saturday morning was hit by a truck. Fortunately, Kleister's was not injured in the car accident. Kleister said of the final, I felt like it was never going to end. It was a really tough battle with some great shots, great tennis, and great fitness. I'm glad that I won. Obviously, it's disappointing for Caroline, but I don't know how many more years I'm going to keep doing this. She has a great future ahead of her. Kleister is just the fifth woman in history to win the season-ending tournament three times, joining Martina Navratilova, Steffi Graf, Chris Evert, and Monica Seles. The 20-year-old Wozniacki, who entered the final with a 31-3 record over her last seven tournaments, concludes the season ranking number one after falling a rematch of the 2009 U.S. Open. Wozniacki said, It's been a fantastic week for me. Kim just played amazing today and she deserved to win. Michael Chang is about to embrace a new title, fatherhood. The former French Open champion and wife Amber Liu are expecting their first child. The baby is scheduled to arrive a little more than two years after the couple wed. Chang married Lou on October 18, 2008 in Laguna Hills, California. Chang is set to join fellow American champions Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi as a father. Agassi and wife Steffi Graf have two children who have hit the tennis genetic lottery with a pair of former world number one ranking parents. But Chang's child may well also be blessed with the tennis genes. Lou was an all-American standout for Stanford and hits with her husband when he's not playing on the senior circuit. Christoph Rockus has a theory on performance-enhancing drug use in tennis. If you can beat him, legalize him. The 237th ranked Belgian told a Belgian newspaper players are using performance-enhancing drugs despite testing. Rocca said he supports legalizing PED use in tennis because he believes drug use is already part of the game. Rocca told the Belgian publication, there's a lot of cheating, simply people don't like to talk about it. I simply would like to stop the pretending. This hypocrisy is exasperating. While skeptics may downplay the 31-year-old Belgian's comments as a case of a retiring player making headline grab, Rocca suggests that drug use already occurs, the sport should acknowledge it and allow it. Rocca said, I would not be against it anyway, it exists. People who take these types of products know very well that they take risks with their health, but they take it knowing because it could let them make a living for their entire family. This isn't the first time Rockus has gained international attention this season. In July, the first round Newport match between British world number 552 Richard Bloomfield and Rockus attracted over $1.5 million in wagers and sparked an investigation after the 27-year-old Bloomfield, who had only one career ATP Tour level victory to his credit, beat Rockus 7-6. Officials became suspicious due to the high volume of money bet on the obscure first round match. Betting site Betfair reported the match drew 15 to 20 times more betting activity than any other first round encounters. Several current and former players have raised the question that since current urine tests cannot detect human growth hormone, a drug test that athletes have used to gain competitive edge in other sports, how can tennis truly claim it is a clean sport? After American Wayne Odesnik was hit with a two-year suspension for attempting to import HGH into Australia, Hall of Famer John McEnroe told Tennis Now the fact that there is no test for HGH will lead to speculation. McEnroe told us, Odesnik is not a high-ranked player and everyone is hoping that's not a problem with the guys ranked higher up. I know that tennis players are tested more than any athletes. Having said that, I don't believe they're being tested for that particular drug. Moving on, Roger Federer grew up as a Basel ball boy, and he returns to his hometown tournament aiming to reclaim the Basel title. Three-time champion Federer fell to Novak Djokovic in the 2009 final. 
Ledbetter, who won Stockholm last week to tie Pete Sampras' mark of 64 career ATP titles, can surpass Sampras for the fourth place on the open era title list if he wins Basel. Better is the top seed this week, leading a loaded field that includes the second-seeded Djokovic, Wimbledon finalist Thomas Burdich, former finalist David Nalbandian, and Americans Andy Roddick, John Isner, and Sam Querrey. Roddick squares off against Querrey in an all-American opening round showdown of big servers. The ninth-ranked Roddick has won four of six meetings with Querrey, but Sam won their last match in Memphis in February. Query has won four titles this season. Roddick is bidding for his first title since he beat world number one Rafael Nadal and Burdich in succession to win Miami. Well, that wraps us up for today, tennis fans. Be sure to subscribe to the Tennis Now YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And you know what? Go below to the info section and click on the newsletter. We're going to give you a free newsletter with all the latest tennis updates. Be sure also, once you go onto Tennis Now, to sign up for all of our great contests. We have great prizes. Please sign up. I'm Lauren Lynch and this is Tennis Now. Thanks for watching. See you Friday.